Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the RSR Video Email Bag Show. Now here's the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Your host, Bad Brad Berkwit. Forget about it. now love sweet love huh. has it ever been more truer than right now that is the great jackie de shannon burt Bacharach's song what the world needs now a little bit more of that i've literally played this song a week straight i probably 40 times back to back to back every single freaking day because it just puts me in a great mood and it truly is what the world needs now forget about it Jackie to Shannon. Sing it. What a fantastic song. Again, Jackie to Shannon, What the World Needs Now. Written by Burt Bacharach. Great, 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 great song. All right, folks, before we get into your questions tonight, and we got some good ones. All right, my sister went through them and told me your first one out the gate is probably going to be a long one. Okay? So, but before we do that, make sure that you subscribe to the RSR YouTube channel, which you see me promoting on Facebook every day or every other day. And the 600th subscriber will win this book. Running with the Champ, my 40-year friendship with Muhammad Ali. We're very close to hitting 600, which is a milestone, as everybody tells me. Your first 600 is supposed to be really, really hard. But we're finding out it takes a lot of work. People don't realize that you got to promote. So hit that freaking button and subscribe. Forget about it. Now, without further ado, let's get into your questions tonight. First question up is, what up, bad brand? Just wondering who is your pick in the Trey Morris and Ed Lattimore fight on September 23rd at the Buffalo Run Casino from Tim C. from Rocky Comfort, Missouri. Well, welcome back there, Tim C. We won't give away your real other name. I shouldn't say real. Your other name, wink, wink. Okay? But that's a good, good question. I'm going to break it down because I know a lot of people that watch my show are big fans of Trey Lippy Morrison and the Four State franchise which also consists of Dylan and Jesse Cook, uh, Jared the Legacy Rouse, Ivan Baranchek, who's the newest member, Trey Lippy Morrison, and Kenzie Morrison. Now, let's talk about this fight. First of all, Tony Holden, the promoter, has went on record, Tim, and said uh, he did not want this fight. Absolutely did not want this fight for Trey coming back with the hand injury, long layoff. Freddie Roach supposedly talked him into it, and Trey and Freddie said, we are ready for this fight. Forget about it. Okay, maybe they didn't say forget about it, Tim. I'm saying forget about it. So, your promoter didn't want the fight. On paper, it's a good doggone fight. Okay, now let's break it down. I'm going to break down each fight for you. Okay, let's talk about the guests coming to Trey Lippy Morrison's house, Ed Lattimore. Okay, he's an undefeated heavyweight, as, and you know all this already. I'm sure you researched it, but this is for the viewers that don't know this. He's undefeated. I think he's 13 0 with seven KOs. Okay, a couple names on his ledger that I'm aware of. One of them I actually, I've seen a couple of them fight, but one of them I've seen actually fight live when he used to be on the East Coast is Willis Lockett. 
Can't remember if he stopped him or if it was a split decision, but he beat him, obviously. He's undefeated. Reuben Williams, who you'll remember was a super middleweight at one time, fought Jeff Lacey, Jeff left Hook Lacey for the IBF superweight middleweight or super middleweight title and obviously ballooned up to heavyweight. Wow, that's a lot of weight. Has I've seen it before. Gilmer Jones comes to mind blowing up from, I think, middleweight all the way up to heavyweight or cruiserweight. And he also has Reuben Williams. I'm sorry, I said Reuben Williams. Willis Lockett, Reuben Williams, and Robert Davis. Now, those three guys, especially Robert Davis and Reuben Williams, between the two of them, they have probably 50, 60 fights, which is a lot of fights. Okay, yeah, they're long in the tooth. We know that. But they're journeymen. If you remember, I've always said that I wanted to see Trey fight a journeyman to get uh, a few rounds in and see how he handles somebody with some skills, maybe long in the tooth. Okay, so they went with this undefeated guy. So Ed Lattimore obviously has the better, way better record than Trey Lippy Morrison. For, not record, competition, I should say, than Trey Lippy Morrison does. That's not even debatable. Anybody debates that point doesn't know boxing. Okay, now, from the tape that I've seen, I've not seen Ed Lattimore fight other than a couple things on YouTube. Looks more of a boxer. Now, he's got seven KOs out of 13 wins, but I don't see big power from him. See more of a boxer, okay? So, that's the Lattimore side. He gets a thumbs up for the uh, definite better opposition. Now, let's talk about Trey. We obviously know he's coming off of, I think his last fight was what, it was January when he hurt his hand? And uh, he was in a tough fight. He got cut, hurt his hand. But I gave him props because first really tough guy that he fought and he persevered through a cut and an injured hand. Pretty sure both of them happened in that same fight. In fact, I'm positive they happened in the same fight. So he's coming back, of a coming back off of a long layoff. Now, edge to Trey with the power. He definitely is a bigger puncher than Lattimore is, in my opinion. Okay, so you're going to have Trey coming in. He looks great. I've seen him. And photos on Facebook, and he's definitely positive mind. He's been working real hard. His physique looks the best I've ever seen it, which credit to Trey again. Last time I interviewed him, uh, unfortunately, the interview didn't go live because it didn't record the sound. But he said in there, if I want to fight these guys like Wilder and so on, I need to start looking like them. So he's toned up quite a bit. He's got some more room to go, but more uh, working out to go. But damn it, he looks good. And I give him credit. Both of these guys look good. There's no questions that they're coming in shape from what you can tell by the pictures. Okay? So, again, edge to Trey with the power. Now, here's the thing. It's a six-round fight. If Trey cannot get him out of there in two rounds and, and let him work and withstand Trey Lippy Morrison's power, okay, Trey has, ha he has to have a plan B, which is he's going to have to try to box. Or do something, whatever his plan B is, okay? Because if Lattimore stays there, I don't see Lattimore staying in the pocket. I really don't. But he may surprise us all. If he does, he probably won't get knocked out. But if he doesn't, and he boxes, which he tends to look like more of a boxer than a puncher like Trey, he's got a good shot. So Trey has to have a plan B if he does not, in fact, have a plan B. And Lattimore really boxes him well, boxes his ear off, ears off, because remember, this is the home of Trey Lippy Morrison, so we know hometown decisions can go towards the hometown fighter. But if Lattimore really steps it up and Trey can't knock him out and come up with a plan B and, and do something boxing, then Lattimore has a chance to win the decision. Knockout, I'm going to lean towards Morrison. Decision, if Trey doesn't have a plan B, towards Lattimore. Now, my pick, drum roll. Wait for it. I'm not picking. You know what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do, Tim. I'm going to say it's a pick em fight. I got to see early on, is Trey past, you know, is he worried about his hand? I mean, come on. He has to be a little bit worried about what happens. What if what happens if he cracks him one and his hand gets messed up again? We don't know. We, you never know in boxing what can happen. So I'm going to say it's a pick em fight. It can go either way. But I will say this for Trey. If he does, in fact, beat Ed Lattimore, and he can beat him, He's got a very good chance to win. It's a step up, and it puts him at the next level. He'll get big props from me because this is the type of opponent he needs. Okay, I still would like to see him fight a journeyman fighter that does a lot of tricks in there and see how he handles that as well. But if he beats Lattimore, who's a better opponent than, I believe, Trey's 10-0, better than all of his other opponents, at least on paper, okay, and the opposition that Lattimore has faced. So this is a coming out for, fight for Trey. I could see how Tony feels like that, or felt like that, I should say. 
I disagree. I think Trey needs this fight because if he wins it, hey Tim, what's it going to do for his his uh, his self esteem? Is uh, you know building him up? It's going to be fantastic for him. So there is my pick. Pick him. Sorry, pal. I know you want me to go either way, but I gave you a great breakdown nonetheless. All right, next question. <clears throat> Bad Brad, watch your show the other day and agree with you on GGG beating Brooke. If Brooke doesn't get ruined and does in fact lose, I see him unifying the welterweight division and holding all the belts. What do you think, Johnny M from Spokane, Washington? Well, Johnny M from Spokane, Washington. Thanks for writing in, pal. Great question. I absolutely agree with you. I do like Keith, one-time Thurman, but I'm not sold on him. I think Brooke, and I know they're going to say, well, the only big name on his ledger was Sean Porter. Well, he beat him pretty easily. And let's talk about Thurman Porter was a much closer fight. Was it 115-113? So, I, excuse me, I agree with you that Brooke will unify the welterweight division if, and it's a big if, if he's not ruined by GGG. Because GGG is the type of fighter like Marvin Hagler was that ruins other fighters. Okay, folks, we're going to take a short commercial break. Hey, folks, this is Bad Brad Burke with the host of the RSR video email bad show. Forget about it. And I want to talk to you about an exciting opportunity to advertise or sponsor on my show. If you're interested, send serious business inquiries to Ringside Report. 2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringside report. 2014 at gmail.com. Forget about it. <clears throat> Excuse me? What? Aren't we supposed to be doing a shoot for your book ad? Uh, yeah, but I'm reading right now. I'm reading an interview in my book with James Quick Tillis. And I tell you what, I didn't realize I did a heck of an interview. And? And uh, I guess we do need to do this book ad. Yeah. Hey, folks, here's the book. Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime by the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Me. Forget about it. All right, there it is on the back. Okay, and on the front. Now, how do you order this book? You go to authorhouse.com, and you'll pick it up wholesale. You'll save a few fazoos. Forget about it. But if you want to go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble, you can do that, too. You're just going to pay retail that way. Now, for all the folks that ask me, yes, I will take this book here if you mail it to me and cover postage and handling to Tulsa and to wherever you live in the world. I will personally autograph your book. Again, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime by the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad bread out. All right. We're now back, and if you forgot who the hell I am, I'm the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkman. And this is the RSR Video Email Bad Show. Forget about it. Next question. Bad Brad, long-time viewer since your first show, and man, you cracked me up. Always keep it real. I'm wondering what you think of an 80s fighter that I'm sure you know named Mustafa Hampshire. How do you think he would fare today? Sign Isbel T from New Rochelle, New York. Well, Isbel, that's the first time. I don't know that name. Well, first of all, welcome to the show, pal. And, hey, New Rochelle, the home of the Dick Van Dyke Show and where I'm from, where I'm born. I lived in Larch Mine Acres. I was born in New Rochelle Hospital. Okay, I grew up there. Then we moved to Fedemore Road in uh, Mamaroneck, okay? You want to know about Mustafa Hampshire? Well, first of all, I interviewed him several years ago, so go on the Ringside Report, uh, or go on ringsidereport.com, as I would say, the channel, but it's a different story. Ringsidereport.com, and type in Brad Berkwit, Mustafa Hamshoe, and you will see our interview. Now, he was a tough SOB, and he could get in your head, because he was dirty as all outdoors. He'd get in your head. He beat Bobby Chess, who was an upcoming fighter, got inside of his head and beat him. Beat him pretty doggone good. Now, he couldn't do anything with Marvin Hagler. First fight was better than the second fight. But today, I'd say he'd have a chance because he was mentally tough. So my, what he might have lacked in skills, he made up in being mentally tough. And remember what they say about the game. It's more mental than it is physical. I think he'd be a world champion today, okay? And I'd love to see him against GGG. I'd probably pick GGG to beat him, but he'd be cute in there and you never know, okay? That was a great question. Thank you for bringing up a guy from yesteryear. All right, last question tonight, folks. Mr. Berkwood, 
Oh, wow. I follow all your stuff on Facebook and I'm honored to be your Facebook friend, sir. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy that we're friends on Facebook. That's great. Thank you for your service. Uh, well, thank you. I should say you're welcome. I also did a stint in the military a few years back and loved it. Well, pal, thank you for your service. In fact, I was at, I was at a fight on Fort Bragg where I was stationed. It was between Booker T. Word, and I think the other fight was fighter was Anthony Hembrook. Do you remember this fight? Thanks for taking the time to answer my question. Kevin J. from New Bern, North Carolina. Well, Kevin J. from New Bern, North Carolina. I used to go there a lot. First of all, do I remember that fight? Forget about it. Mamma mia. Do you remember how Anthony Hembrick came in and he did all of that? I think he came in with a rifle and all that shtick he did. And then what happens? He got in the ring and Booker T. Ward beat him pillar to post, kicked his ass. I think it was a TKO. And I want to say that was on Tuesday Night Fights with Sean O'Grady and Al Albert. I'm almost positive. But oh, I remember that fight. And I think Anthony Hembrick was on active duty. I think he was. Or he was in the reserves. I can't remember that part. But I remember that fight. Booker T. Ward's coming out party. Boy, oh boy. And I remember Booker T. Ward was a smaller guy, built like a brick shit house. Man, that was a great memory, pal. We went down memory lane on that. All right, folks, let's talk about it one more time. The 600th subscriber to the RSR YouTube channel by hitting that freaking button. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. We'll win this book. Running with the Champ, My 40-Year Friendship with Muhammad Ali. I reviewed it on the RSR YouTube channel. Fantastic book. All right, folks. That's another RSR video email bag show. And again, forget about it. And as Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently, so long ago, you doggone right, I'm going to talk my way through this song. I can't sing to the guy that left me that comment on my Facebook channel. The best is yet to come. Bad Brad out.